Hello, in this video I'm going to talk about how to connect effects modules to your Zwilbot player. So the way Zwilbot works is you've got all these different effects devices and then in order to have them work you need to connect them to the player. So they won't work until they're connected to the player and this is the area where they get connected and I can click this plus button to extend it and you can see we've got 18 slots here so there's 18 slots for different effects to go um, but you can actually have more than 18 because there's a module called group which allows you to connect more but I'll cover that in a different video so I'm just going to drag some random effect modules in I'm going to drag the blob one the blur and this candy one so I'm currently playing, I've got a bunch of images loaded into my player. None of the effects are impacting this, we can see, because none of them are connected to the player. So there's two ways you can connect modules to your player. You can either click on the individual icons. So if I click on this blob icon, when I select this drop down menu now, you'll see it appears there. So all of these have now picked up the blob. So before you can select them, you need to allow them to be seen by the player. So now if I click blur, I've got blob and blur. If I click candy, I've also got candy there. Now, if I just get rid of these and then I bring them back in, another way you can do it, if you don't want to do that individually, this C button down here will call all effects modules that are in your project. So if I click this now, it's picking up all three of them. So now I can select them in these drop downs, and now they're connected to the player, and these buttons here will switch them on or off. So when it's red, it means they're off, and when they're blue, they're on so currently they are all on so i can either turn them on and off on the robot player or i can turn them on and off in the individual modules clicking this r button that'll reset it so what that's going to do is clear all effects that are connected to the player and then it's also wiped them all from the memory so now the player can't see them so if I want to get them back in I can click the C button and they reappear. This X that's next to the module icon will wipe it from the player's menu uh, the player's memory. So if I just call them all and I load them all up if I click this X next to blur, not only has it removed it, but it's also forgotten it. So now it's not picking it up. So I would have to either click the C button or I can click the icon of blur and it'll bring it back up. Now the order that they're loaded into these slots is very important because that's going to represent the order that they get processed in your effects chain. So currently can the candy effect will be applied on top of the blob effect and that will be applied on top of the blur effect so maybe a good way to demo this if i get rid of these effects i'll bring in the abc effect and i will bring in the crunch effect my player is not seeing them at the moment so i'm going to click this c button to call them and then I'm going to select the ABC module first and then underneath it I'm going to put the crunch module and I'm going to turn them on by clicking these buttons. So the ABC is the text and then this is the crunch effect. I'll just make it a bit bigger. So currently the ABC is on top of the crunch. So what you can do is click and drag to reorder them and I can just drag it to any of these slots. So if I drag it down here, now you'll see that that text is underneath the crunch 
effect, so the crunch effect is also applying to the text. Whereas if I drag the crunch effect down here, for example, that is no longer affecting the text. So I'll just bring in some more effects to demo this further. Let's bring in the reflex module and let's bring in the VHS effect. Let's call those. I'm going to put the VHS effect on top and let's just put the reflex effect here and let's switch them both on. And I'll just show you what happens as you drag and drop these around and change the order. So you can see it can have a huge impact. So one of the fun things about Zwilbar is just experimenting with different signal chains. That's quite cool. One thing to bear in mind, if you drag an effect outside of a slot, so if I drag it into a slot, it's fine. It'll just move it. But if I drag it to here, for example, then I've lost it. So you need to be very careful when you're dragging and dropping these because quite a few times I've accidentally dragged it not exactly onto a slot and I've ended up losing it. And what will happen then is that it's now been, it's not only has it disappeared from here, but it's been forgotten by the player. So if I try and get it back, it's not in the drop down. And even if I try to call it using the C button, it's not there. And if I try clicking the icon, it doesn't appear. So what you have to do, click the X button, and then you can either click the C or the individual module icon and it'll reappear. So that's just something to bear in mind. If you accidentally drag it and it disappears, then you have to click the X button and then recall it again. Now you don't have to have modules on the same channel as the player. So I could move this ABC module onto this audio channel and I could move VHS onto this MIDI channel. And if I reset this, it still works the same way. So I can click C to call all of them and they're still there. So I can still have my VHS and ABC modules. It still works the same way if I want to forget the ABC one, I can click this button. And now it's forgotten it. If I want to get it back, click the C button and it's back. Also, what's quite a handy little feature, if you're on a different channel and you've got a module loaded up there, this little Z button will appear. If you click that, it'll allow you to jump back to whatever channel the player is on. So with this VHS module on the MIDI, MIDI channel, I can click that. So it's quite a nice, quick and easy way to jump back to your player.